Hi everyone, this is Joe Kane from Joe Rocks Corn Auto, and today I'm going to be working on a repair job of this garden frog. Uh, this frog is approximately eight or nine inches long and about four inches tall. And I found him in a local rock garden, but as you can see, the paint was pretty. I've already started touching him up. I painted the eyes there, and uh, he was he was not looking too good when I found him. The front feet are actually broke off, but I did I did start with the eyes here, painted him some gold and some black in there, and then I painted the front of his neck. Did a blend of some different colors, and uh, he's starting to actually shape up already. Look at those broken feet. It's kind of sad. But, you know, whatever. And uh, the rest of it I just touched up with different colors of paint to kind of give him a, a variable color. And I'm going to put puffy paint dots over all, all over this frog. And hopefully then it's going to come out looking pretty awesome. So we'll see. I've done this with another frog in the past and it turned out really nice. And uh, so let's give it a shot. Now, normally when I'm doing these types of projects, I might speed up the video, uh, put it in time lapse mode or put it in, you know, triple speed mode or whatever. But today I'm going to try to take it step by step, step in real time. So because some of you have expressed an interest in seeing me paint real time rather than the, the speeded up version. So. Um, it's, you know, that's fine. Uh, those who want to speed through can always skip ahead to see the progress. But on this guy, I really want to start with the neck because, um, when you're painting a big, uh, item like this, you got to be careful not to touch the wet puffy paint. And sometimes you can just do some of it and let it dry and then do some more and let it dry. But today I'm going to try to paint it all the way through get the whole thing done without having to let let it dry just so you can see the whole process so I'm using a little bit of green glow here around his lips I'm hoping this like in the dark will give him a nice little smile <laughs> in case you're looking for him in the dark and then I'll use various colors of green puffy paint to do the rest of his body and I'll also put some gold in there you can see I put I used some acrylic paint as a base coat and there was some really nasty well as you see the front feet are broken off so I just painted over the bare cement or plaster or whatever I think it's cement and then um, the neck was originally like really dark green but when you look at any live frog or toad, this looks to be some sort of a bullfrog, but who knows. But if you ever look at a live one, a real one, you can see they're not, they have, they usually have a really light yellowish green neck or sometimes like this almost bluish color. And so I thought, well, let's do that. So there's the glow in the dark paint. I'm going to put a little bit right by his eyes. So again, hopefully at night, when the lights go out, you'll be able to see his eyes and his mouth, and he'll have a very interesting glow. Just some little highlights. The other frog I painted, named Billy, um, sits in my backyard and everybody who comes into my backyard comments on them. You'll see, I will put at the end of this video what Billy looks like next to this one. My son wants to call him Joel uh, because, you know, Billy Joel. So, whatever. <laughs> I guess that can work. So now adding in another color of green this is sort of an iridescent sea foam green but I think you know I'm putting this sparsely as you can see I'm spacing out these dots I don't want you know usually their necks are smoother than the rest of their body you know when you see warts on a frog or bumps on a frog or a toad 
it's mostly on their back. Their bellies and their necks are usually pretty smooth. So these are more for a visual effect than anything because you really wouldn't even see these on a real frog. But I, I, if you space them out, they can look kind of nice after you add in all the different shades of green. Okay, so there's the that color. I don't really need iridescent green anywhere else on him, so set that one to the side. I'll prop him up here so I can see what I'm doing. So here we go with this is sort of a just a shiny medium medium light green. And these paints are they're called puffy paints or fabric paint. There's different brands. You can find them at any hobby store, or most hobby stores have them. Usually in the section where you'll find, um, uh, like at uh, stuff for um, t-shirts or de decorating on clothing. So uh, in, in my case, I go to Michael's or I go to Hobby Lobby. You can also order them on Amazon. When I order the, the bigger size, I get them on Amazon because it's just usually cheaper to buy them in bulk for me because I use a lot of puffy paint. Some of the advantages of using puffy paint are that it's extremely durable. You know, it's made to go on clothes and then survive through multiple washing machine episodes and, and still retain its color. So, And when it dries, it has sort of a rubbery, it's a very durable, rubbery, plastic kind of texture to it. So I love using it on rocks because if I'm going to put them outside, I don't want them to fade, you know, lose their color. And so it makes a great, makes a great covering or, you know, addition to your rock creations when you, and it also gives a really cool texture. And on an animal like this, why not? So here I'm just going to pretend his feet are actually there. <laughs> I'm just going to texturize them just like I would even if his feet were there. So I'm going to add in some dots here. Okay, and yeah, puffy paint, um, you can do amazing things with puffy paint. If you look at some of my other videos, you can do patterns with them and designs and all kinds of stuff. But again, what I like about it is the durability and the fact that they don't lose their color um, sitting in the sun or, or wash off from the rain. So here's like a standard green puffy paint made by Tulip. The brand is Tulip. Um, tulips one of my go-to's because you can buy them in these larger bottles and I, I sometimes paint canvases and other large rocks with puffy paint so I use a lot of it this one actually is almost empty so you'll learn that by using them that when they get almost empty sometimes they'll just you know you'll get a little air bubble in there and so you got to be a little careful with a project like this it's not too important because this frog is kind of rough. He will be kind of rough looking anyway. So if there's a little burp of paint somewhere, I'll just put a dot on top of it. It'll be fine. So as you can see, I'm just filling in between the gaps here. And that helps to blend those other colors in. And I'm just going to keep going all the way. Th I'm just going to go all over this frog. I mean, I will do some other colors. I'll put some gold probably around the eyes like the, the eye ridge and then I'll put some gold down the center of the back just really not because a frog looks like that because I think it'll look good decoratively and then I'm also going to use some some green glitter paint uh, it's sparkle paint whatever it had different names depending on what brand you use but it will in the sun this frog will really shine and even on the final coating or when I put the sealer coat on I'll put on a layer of sealer coat and then I'll put I'll sprinkle some some silver glitter on him and it will add to that effect of him just really sparkling in the sun because I, I intend or expect this guy will end up somewhere outside I may bring him back to the garden I found him in you know, it was like one of those community rock gardens where you can trade a rock. And I took, I traded a really nice, beautiful, large 20 pound rock with a very intricate design on it for this little guy who was kind of suffering. <laughs> so I'm going to try to give him a second life here. Make him feel special again.
Okay, so I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stop talking for a while, but I'll keep. I'll keep working, and I'll let you watch the whole process, and then I'll come back at the end and uh, and just finish it up. So enjoy the process, and I'll turn the music up a little bit here and just let it. Just let it go. So I'll be back a little bit.
Okay, that's a lot of progress down. And as you can see, I'm just putting some of this green glitter paint in between some of the dots. At this stage, you just got to be careful not to touch it because, you know, if you smear those dots, you can, you can remove the smeared paint and then um, put the dots back on. But it's kind of a pain in the butt, you know, so I try to be really careful at this stage, which is why I keep them on the little tray here. And that allows me to move him around without touching him. And I use, do this a lot. Or sometimes I'll have him on top of a, a, a... I'll put a rock on top of a piece of cardboard. So now I've got all the dots on there. I think that's all. Let me see. He looks pretty good. And I love using a variety of colors because once he dries, it's going to make him look textured. And also, it'll, it'll, it gets, just gives a... See there what I just did? I just touched four dots there and squished them. So now I'm using this little tool. This is a handy tool, by the way, if you're using puffy paint. <laughs> it's actually uh, it's shaped like a paintbrush, but it's got a rubber tip on the end, almost like a little spatula. And now I'm going to add the dots back in where I smeared them. Poor little guy. Right on his tailbone. You don't need... <laughs> Yeah. Okay, just quick repair there. And you can get that tool at hobby stores too. I forget what it's called, but it's like a silicone tip. All right, so now I move them over here. This is where I dry them. I have this Lazy Susan, and then I also have a fan just to the right there, um, which I can turn on. And with puffy paint, if you're just letting it sit and dry, it'll take three or four days. But if I put it on under the fan overnight, it will be pretty much dry, ready for sealing by the next day. So, you know, 12 hours, something like that, 10 hours, 12 hours, it'll dry really a lot quicker than if you were just to leave it sitting. So I'm going to put this on high because I really want this to be dry tomorrow. So I can come back and seal this thing and add on the glitter and uh, finish it up. Look at that guy. Spectacular, isn't he? Yep, he looks a lot happier now. So that's kind of what he looks like. So I'm going to put the spray sealer on right now. And this is just Krylon Triple Thick Sealer. Just give it, a, try to give it a nice coating. And I just, look at that. Look at those guys. So that's Billy there. The big one is Billy. And then I guess Joel is the small one. And I always sign them when I finish them. I do that with my rocks too. And here's what he looks like by himself. I appreciate everybody tuning in, and I hope uh, you enjoyed this video. Check out my other videos at Joe Rocks Coronado, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.